Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR. And uh, apparently yesterday, Fox Business was talking about the OGL, the fiasco, D&D Beyond. My God, what what has Hasbro wrought? Well, now they have made uh, the news at The Motley Fool. And I've been following The Motley Fool for... I don't know, probably two decades. And not that I really invest much in uh, st stocks. I have investment accounts now. The investing is done for me. But I always find that their take on stuff is very interesting and very accurate. And uh, I got to thank Rob Conley for pointing this one out. I believe it was Rob. So Hasbro's d, &D division, uh, it's otherwise known as Wizards of the Coast, but they figure... <laughs> Nobody knows what Wizards of the Coast is, but everybody knows what D&D is. Hasbro's D&D &D division is big business, accounting for up to 72% of company profits, and it's in trouble. Now, there's uh, a thread on Reddit. I'm not going to pull it up, but I will try to link it, where uh, it talks about the uh, attempt earlier in 2022 to spin off Wizards of the Coast as its own company, but that might have made the company potentially worth more than Hasbro. So, don't look now, but gaming giant Hasbro may have just failed a critical dice roll. They got their tweaky stuff. Um, for the past several weeks, Hasbro's been brought in a brouhaha of its own making. And it's been moving to better monetize its intellectual property under the Dungeons and Dragons brand, and it's not going well for Hasbro. By the way, what you're looking at here is Hasbro stocks for the last year. Wizards of the Coast is doing well, but I guess Hasbro is not doing well. Uh, at one point, they they went from uh, stock went from up just over 105 down to just under 55. Right now, it's hovering right around 65 dollars a share, give or take. Still, that's a loss of, I don't know, I'm thinking around 36%, 37% year to date. Uh, that's not a good investment. Now, I know, hey, if you any if you have money in any kind of market, you know, stocks have been a little volatile. But that's just not a good return on investment. So when you don't have a good, when your stock, you've got to increase profits, right? And if your most profits are coming from which is of the coast, then let's just, Increased profits in Wizards of the Coast. Now, there's a whole other thing going on with, with Magic the Gathering. We already know about the $1,000 uh, booster packs um, that was really not taken well by the community. And uh, I'm, I'm hearing rumblings on that end. It's a whole other investigation I got to stick my head into the rabbit hole on. But it's hard to overestimate how important Wizards of the Coast is to Hasbro. According to S&P Global Market Intelligence, it accounts for just 22% of Hasbro's annual revenue, but produces a staggering 72% of Hasbro's profit. And profit is where it's at. Of course, Hasbro wants more. Late last month, news leaked that Hasbro has been mooting a new open game license, OGL, for use of its d, d intellectual property, characterized as an update of the company's current 1.0 OGL, which was first published in 2000. This new OGL 1.1 would focus on tabletop role-playing game supplements such as printed materials and PDFs, which Hasbro notes are by, and you know, Hasbro, which is the coast, we're using them interchangeably. The article uses them interchangeably. If I say Wizards of the Coast, and you go, oh, don't pick on Wizards of the Coast. It's all Hasbro. They weren't the fucking same. All right? Sorry. Uh, it's by far the most common form distribution of D&D &D content. Uh, apparently, blogs and shit don't count. But in any case, under OGL 1.0, Hasbro granted a perpetual worldwide non-exclusive license to copy, modify, and distribute any open game content originally distributed under any version of this license. 1.1 voids the license. Yep. 
Under the new terms, anyone creating content with use of Hasbro intellectual property and selling that content for profit would need to report to Hasbro on everything it is selling and inform Hasbro of its annual revenue for such sales if it exceeds 50000 Now, the next paragraph, this is the first time I've seen anybody point this out. It is spot on the reason why. In doing so, they would essentially be tipping Hasbro off to any new revenue opportunities they discover. So the Hasbro can move in and claim those areas for themselves. And as a bonus, to make it even easier for Hasbro, anyone signing on to OGL 1.1 would automatically grant Hasbro what? A non-exclusive. Perpetual. And now we're adding irrevocable into the license, so... That's a big F you to you who know, thought that 1.0 wasn't irrevocable. Uh, worldwide sub licensable royalty free license to use that content for, you guessed it, any purpose. And then, of course, they talk about the, uh, the tax on revenue, the royalties on revenue, not profit, revenue over 750. So, why would they do this? <clears throat> uh, Gizmoba pointed out. Last week, startup companies such as Cobra Press, Green Ronin, and Paizo essentially built their businesses in reliance on the original OGL. Now, under the terms of 1.1, the updated rules will force those startups to make massive modifications to their business lines and business practices. That may even be Hasbro's intention. Remember, 1.0 wasn't intended to fund major competitors and wasn't intended to allow people to make DD apps, videos, uh, pantomimes, songs. Oh my God. And, and if the switch of ruin licensing agreements happens to kneecap a few Hasbro competitors in the process, well, say la vie. Brave Sir Robin bravely ran away, or so Hasbro thought on Friday last week. Hasbro pulled an abrupt Volta Fasa. A Volta face? I'm not even sure. I'm guessing it's an about face if we're using the English term, and had a subsidiary, d d Beyond, publish a mea culpa on its website, arguing that its only goal, and folks, if you can, uh, if you can smell the bullshit that Hasbro is cooking, uh, uh, the only goal revised in the OGL was to protect players from hateful and discriminatory products, because yeah, we are overwhelmed with that, right? We see it all over the place. I'm being facetious, just so you will know. Control usage of its intellectual property in NFTs and blockchain, which, by the way, Hasbro is doing their own NFTs. Good going, guys. And prevent major corporations using Hasbro IP for their own commercial and promotional purpose. Now, there's no major corporation compared to Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro in the gaming world, right? You compare them to Wizards of the Coast, there's no major corporation. But that promotional purpose leads me to believe this was the Wendy's or RPG that used the OGL. And I guess they were a little upset they didn't get a piece of that. They didn't come to us for, for licensing. Uh, faced with the backlash from the community, Hasbro is confirming the content already released under the original OGL will remain unaffected. Many other uses of the company's intellectual property will remain permitted. And most importantly, the 1.1 will not, or 2.0 now, right, will not contain any royalty structure. Uh, it will also apparently not include the license back provision mentioned above, but I don't know about that. But really, they're still not saying that it won't include reporting your sales. So it might still be, give us a peek behind your curtain. What it means for investors. Now, this is important. Putting a brave face on this fiasco, Hasbro argues the solution is actually a win-win. They won, and so did we. But in fact, if you assume, as a writer of this article does, that the primary goal of redrawing the OGL was to better monetize the company's Dungeons and Dragons properties, grow revenue for Hasbro, and earn more profit for Hasbro profit share shareholders, then it's hard to see this outcome as anything but an abject failure for Hasbro's business. The company may eventually come out with a new OGL, but the chances of this document generating significant income for Hasbro appears to be nil. 
while the damage to the company's reputation is considerably more than nil. For the time being, this doesn't seem to have affected Hasbro stock, which actually gained 15% as the Tempest and Hasbro's T-Pipe brewed. This is it's, uh, suspect this is mainly because the issue has remained below most non-D&D fanatics' radars. Once the effects of the fiasco start showing up in Hasbro's financial results, however, I expect investors may come to the same conclusion that I already have. Hasbro's critics won this round. Hasbro didn't. And it's a good article, and it's great because it's a financial article, and that is the only way you're going to be able to make any changes with the OGL is to hit them in the financials. And the only way to hit Wizards of the Coast Hasbro in the financials is to cancel your D&D Beyond subscriptions. All right? I'm not usually into this, uh, you know, all boycott, but if you need to be heard, sometimes you need to be heard, and this is the way I believe you need to be heard. Folks, on that note, again, thank you to all the new subscribers. Like, subscribe, comment, of course. I will put links in the show notes. And uh, as always, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice, roll them well. I'll be back tomorrow with another live stream. Oh, myself. Myself, Bad Mike. 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday night. Oh, boy. Watch yourselves. <laughs>